the noodle machine that we are using today is um, it's called Shinuchi machine. And this machine is um, actually the only one machine that's, uh, you know, got everything uh, that you can make fresh um, sunuki udon from scratch. And so we have, over here we have uh, ingredients. And so like flour, wheat flour, wheat flour, um, the protein content is like 8.5%. Um, and the ash content is pretty low, um, zero point, less than um, 0.38%. And uh, viscosity is high. You know, viscosity we talked about, like um, measuring like the machine that we have over there, uh, that's, uh, over uh, 850 BU, and look at this amount of salt we're adding to it. Like this is so we're making it like um, 12 to like 15 percent salty level, like water, right? So we're adding this much of salt to the water to make you know salt water, and it's vinegar. And vinegar can be like any kind of like a grain, you know, vinegar like made up of grain. So yeah. That's let's um, let's get started. Okay, so, so this machine has this uh, mixer. This uh, mixer um, mixes up like 12.2 about 12.5 kilograms of wheat flour uh, maximum. And uh, on top of it, you're adding the liquid to it, right? And um, so we start mixing just with the flour um, to get some uh, air into the flour particles. And while we are mixing, um, so she's uh, trying to dissolve like all the salt into the water. Because it's a lot of salt, right? You know, you need to like need to like really thoroughly uh, dissolve it to like, so you have to like sort of really stir it well. So just make sure all the salt is, are like totally dissolved into the water. So we measure the uh, so we measure the salt, right? We measure salt like um, in terms of weight, and um, but you can also you can also actually uh, measure using the uh, refractometer. We have a refractometer that measures the salt. Okay, so we have a question like so how much. Uh, uh, the salt like we're adding for one kilo of uh, one kilogram of a flour. Um, let me um, let me calculate it. So, for example, fifteen. So you're basically making like let's say like fifteen percent salty level. Uh, of water, right? So there's a. Uh, so if this is a uh, five kilograms of flour, and then the hydration ratio is, um, well, fifty percent. So that's two point five kilograms of uh, salt water the inside this salt water, right? So that then fifteen percent of it is salt, right? Fifteen percent of it is salt. So basically. Um, So basically, like that's like 375 grams of salt, and so for one kilograms, that's sorry. Um, so for one kilograms, right? That's that's like 75 grams of salt. But as I said, like you know, when when you cook them, um, when you cook the noodles, 
almost like 90 90 percent like 95 percent with salt it's dissolved in cooking water so um, yeah and then uh, while while we are mixing it um, you know she she prepared the uh, dough beforehand so she goes into is going into um, the pressing right so this part you know it's a muscle development part right so we are working the uh, dough working the dough and, um, and as I said right here in Kiawa like you know certain uh, udon shops still uh, walk the dough um, by stepping on it with the feet right and then it, it's actually you know it sounds like a Sounds like fun, right? But like it's actually a lot of work, actually. It's, you know, like just stepping on them, stepping on the dough, right? But it's a, it's a lot of work. Um, it takes it takes actually um, almost like 30 minutes to be done with that stepping, foot stepping on the dough. It's a lot of work. Like you get sweat actually by doing that. But like using this press machine, um, you know. Just a touch a button, right? Just touch a button and it just wait. And um, so this press unit um, can apply like tremendous amount of like pressure into the dough. Like see that, like how flattened the dough is, right? And then um, you need to uh, you should fold it inwards. So because like certain areas of the dough. Um, didn't get that pressure so we need to you know evenly apply the same amount of pressure right um, the entire areas of dough so we want to like fold it right a couple times and then like press them press it to apply um, you know like good amount of pressure throughout the dough So um, the mixing. So first, uh, we she added actually like just two thirds of the water, right? And then um, she mixed it for like four minutes, and she's mixing it for another minute, and add the rest of the water. Um, this this process like allows for um, the uh, good hydration dough so we add the uh, the liquid uh, little by little um, to allow for like good hydration dough and so this is the third time of uh, pressing so notice that like she's uh, holding in different directions I didn't know. So she's pressing it again. Okay, so the mixing mixing is done. So just five minutes, just five minutes of the mixing. And um, so the, for the, as for the press, right, press. Um, so we're done with the third round of pressing. So you do it like three to five times, depending on the uh, condition of dough, right? So for this dough, um, so she did like three times of pressing and um, so the dough is ready. And um, because um, this dough is like walked up, right? So like we need to like, you know, let it rest. Um, so it goes into the second resting process. But like um, before we put in the resting process, um, we have like, we have someone called like aging machine um, that controls the temperature. 
inside. And uh, before we put them in there, um, we should divide it into um, the pieces that are small enough um, for her to be able to like, kind of handle it, uh, kind of sheet it in the next day. So this is uh, something you should do like kind of like for it, like a efficient operation. So yeah, they're like they're layers of like you know do um kind of like fold it right. It's like they're layers and like so this is like you know what um your dough your semiconductor dough um you, you like how you want the semiconductor dough to look like look and um so there's like they're layers of dough and then like you know um because they are like walked up right now so we need to rest them and uh, remember the um, temperature and that's 18 degrees celsius and we need to yeah these these, these though like these those like muscles like really tired so like we have to like less them like for um 24 hours so the next day uh so she comes in and then like so she uh takes the dough out of the aging machine and start sheeting it one by one to make dough yeah, so make sure that it's all like sealed up and like to keep the dough from drying. So just putting the dough into the uh, aging machine so that it's a, there's a temperature displayed, right? And it's like she set that temperature to like 18 degrees Celsius, like, but now the actual temp is like 24, 24.6, but like now like the cool cooling system like this kicked in, so that like temperature inside is being cooled. Okay, so you know we can actually wait for this dough to be ready, but like that's not gonna happen like for another 24 hours. So like she prepared the dough yesterday right that's that's very clever and so look at the dough like it's very different like it's very moist and soft you know it's like ready to be um sheeted right so so this dough is like um it's very viscous like it's very elastic and and it's very sticky as well so like we should um dust it very well we should dust it very well and you know um she's uh kind of uh, pressing it to basically like flatten it uh, for the dough to be able to like go through the bar And so, you know, as I said, like, you know, this machine has like a rollers, like set of rollers, right? That are like kind of small in diameters. Because like this dough is like, it's very soft. So we don't want to uh, apply like strong pressure. So the dough is like, I mean, the rollers are like small. And uh, so she is thinning it gradually. And so, you see that like um, she's kind of shifting gears towards the bigger numbers, and that means that it, it's narrowing the roller gap between the rollers, but like you no, know, little by little, gradually. So see the like you know how the dough is getting thinner, right? And maybe you've like noticed that like she's inserting the dough like in different directions. This allows this dough to have um, kind of like, you know, being like kind of rolled, like sheeted, like in different directions. Then um, it's kind of getting stronger, um, kind of like in a multi-directional uh, ways. So that like when you pull it, when you pull the dough, like in different directions, 
it's it's pretty strong. But like in case of like um, those sheet that's like sheeted in a uh, uh, Rami machine that allows you to do like just one direction, then if you you know pull that dough uh, sideways, then it's it's pretty weak. Like you know, so you can rip it. But like this dough is like it's pretty strong. I mean, in terms of, like you know when you when you pull it sideways like in different directions, like it's it's strong. And uh, so sh this there's a there's a display in here like that actually shows the thickness uh, of this dough sheet being rolled, being sheeted. So it's changing like it's like you know 4.2, 4.3 millimeters. That's a thickness we saw. And Remember that size is very important, like for noodle texture, right? And so, like we are aiming at like around like three millimeter thickness. It doesn't show. Okay. Maybe one more time of sheeting. So again, like this dough is like very soft and sticky. So you need to um, you need to dust it very well. So this, so the dough, um, this dough sheet like, well, has different, different, um, yes, yeah, so like it's called like, it's like 6.0 millimeter, but like, you know, it's doubled, double sheet. So each sheet uh, should be, you know, 3.0 millimeter in thickness. We need to like measure it that way because, um, yeah, the center, the core of the core, like center of this dough, is like the thickest part of this dough, and then like the edges are like kind of tends to be thinner. So we need to measure the center of the sheet to be able to like get the precise um, measurement of the thickness. And we need to fold it. We need to fold it to kind of fit the dough to the width of the cutter. Um, the, this is, dough is going to be right into and turn it like, and then the, this volume actually um, adjusts the, like, uh, the width of the cut width. So because this um, volume like controls the speed of the conveyor belt that's going to the cutter. Um, so you can, and then there's a switch over here like so there are like four channels of the volume that you can adjust to and then like you can just switch them around to the kind of predetermined cut width so it's cutting now And after it's cut, uh, you know, the noodles are like full, you know, the, like, you know, fall like onto the, uh, the tray that's moving, like kind of like collecting, collecting the noodles, right? You know, strands for a reason. And so like once it's done, like, you know, it stops, right? And then like, when you take the tray out, the noodles also like lined up like beautifully. And then um, you need to like, again, like dust them well so you can only dust them and then um the kind of flour we are like using for dusting is like actually the exact same flour that we use for um we don't need to make the dough 
But like if you are like kind of, well, um, putting them a, um, putting them away like for you know certain period of time, then like you should use the um, um, the starch uh, to like keep them from uh, sticking. So kind of, she's kind of like kind of dividing the noodles, um, kind of straightening them up, straightening them up, and then dividing the noodles um, to um, sort of like portions, but like, you know, it's more than like one serving. Um, I'm definitely sure about that, but like kind of portioning them like to for, um, for um, like easier handling, like when you um, do the cooking. So that's how you make um, Sanuki udon noodles like from scratch on uh, this Shinuchi machine. And yeah, these noodles are very, very good, like in terms of noodle texture. And then, um, so, you know, again, like, well, you can make uh, basically like three different kinds of like noodle textures out of these same noodles by cooking them at different, you know, timing. Okay, so, um, so let's uh, move to our kitchen. Uh, so, and then let me introduce our chief instructor, Mr. Akeda, and he's gonna show us um, some great uh, Sanuki udon dishes that you can actually do at your restaurants as well. So thank you, Mr. Akeda, thank you. <clears throat> okay, so let's start cooking udon noodles first, because it takes, uh, takes long time. So just putting the uh, raw noodles in that. Remember that, you know, we need to have boiling water, right? We need to bring the water to boil before you add, before you put noodles in. And once you put noodles in, like, you know, the cooking temperature, like, usually drops, right? So um, you know, make sure you start it, you start them. You know, we talk about like, you know, starting them, like to kind of spread them around, like as soon as possible, like to expose each strand of noodles to the cooking water as frequently as you can. And then, you know, um, then so that like kind of the, the drop of like, you know, cooking temperature, like kind of disperse like well, and to bring that cooking temperature uh, rise up again. So you, you need to like kind of like start them, start them like first. And then, so you see that the cooking temperature like kind of increasing to that temperature. Like, you know, we said that um, 98.5 degrees Celsius, right? So the noodles kind of so like kind of swimming around. So like that's sort of like ideal condition. So while we cook them, um, Mr. Saketa like is gonna explain the menu. So one of them like she's gonna do is a bukake style. Um, Udon noodles, you know, we talked about in us. So it's like uh, we, we uh, wash them and uh, chill them to the noodles, right? And it like um, uh, pour this uh, special sauce and then um, plate it in uh, with these toppings. And another dish that like he's doing is uh, um, it's, it's kind of like a pasta kind of style, like udon noodles, and something that you know you, easily you can do like at a restaurant. <laughs> so udon noodles are like, basically like, very plain, so like um, they go well with like any any kind of kind of like you know styles of like cooking. Okay, let's first do the uh, 
carbonara like uh, udon and uh, stir the um, so olive oil and, and garlic, minced garlic, and then uh, bacon. Um, so I'm gonna stop fry them like until uh, the color changes. So once they're like done, uh, cooked, I'm um, gonna take them out in a bowl. And in the bowl, uh, I'm gonna add like add other um, ingredients like cream and like uh, things. So we're gonna separate them like until uh, the bacon and uh, like garlic are kind of colored. So these these are done. Okay. So the egg. And prominent cheese, like this is that kind of powder cheese. And a cream. And that's the white dashi that we talked about in the class. So that made up like a kelp and like, you know, bonito. So I'm just going to mix them up. And I'm going to put the uh, cooked noodles in there um, to and mix them up. So this is the style that we talked about in class, that, like in the lecture part, um, kamaage, kamaage, um, you know, like right out of the boiling pot. Um, so, and so this is the yolk that I'm gonna put on the top of the noodles. So the kamage, um, you know, we don't we don't like uh, wa we don't wash them. So we just uh, as soon as like the noodles are ready, like we're gonna pick them out, like just about uh, like just one serving of the noodles, and then um, put in the bowl. Usually, like usually like four to six minutes of cooking time, but like no. We should uh, be able to tell by like kind of well touching the noodles, like kind of like just checking the texture. And so today's uh, the one serving be like just 300 grams, like in terms of like you know um, the cooked noodles weight. It's not them well. And just make sure that like all the sauce, cheese and everything like are just like well, uh, I mean, co coating the like noodles well. And I'm gonna plate it.
And black paper. And put an egg yolk on top. And parsley. Okay, so that's carbonara, um, kamage udon. And it's, it's very simple and easy to make, but it's very, very delicious. <laughs> Right, so um, next would be the bukake uh, udon noodles, and it's like it's cold version of the bukake udon noodles. And then, well, uh, Mr. Akedo, like, you know, pick this uh, dish because um, this dish is like great for um, takeout menu as well. Because, like, we, we cook the noodles and like wash them and like chill them. So chilling them, like, you know, kind of being cold, um, they, they last in terms of, like, uh, noodle texture. So um, it, it's, it's going to be, like, really good uh, takeout dish, takeout item. <clears throat> okay, so um, taking noodle noodles out into the... Uh, the sink, right? Like full of like water, and then uh, you need to so this part. Like you need to like really wash them, like almost like rub them, like with a strong force uh, to get the starch off the noodles. There's a lot of starch actually um, on the noodle surface, and you need to get um, move them like as much as possible. And after that, you have another sink. Uh, where you chill them, where you chill them, and um, so this is like when the noodles, noodle tissue like kind of hardens. So that's why like you are cooking the noodles like longer than like you know uh, like for example like hot soup noodles and other types of noodles like curry noodles and that, other things because you're you're chilling them here and that hardens the noodle texture and look like how like he's like kind of collecting gathering the noodles and kind of, kind of like combing them combing them like make them straight so, so basically like you're, you're portioning them right this way so like in, when you when you make a ramen noodles like you know you portion them like when you actually make them like the fresh noodles but like in terms of, like udon noodles like you cook them in batch and then uh you portion them so it's a very different process okay so let's plate it So you need to like calm them, calm the noodles, and then like kind of make them as straight as you can, and like so it's got that like it's very very beautiful, right? Like. And so we're gonna plate them. Um, so this is a daikon radish, a radish like uh, well browned like radish like put on the center and grunge ginger 
and chopped scallions. And this is a type of citrus that's uh, kind of famous in like our neighboring prefecture, like Tokushima, like it's called Sudachi, and uh, it's got like this bitter, bitter taste to it. And putting the bonito flakes. This is beautiful. And so this is the kind of, well, the bukake dish that you come across like and when you have, when you, uh, when you have a chance to like uh, visit one of the Sanuki Udon shops. And then so she prepared this uh, tempura as well, like variety of tempura. It's like, and then one thing you will be able to like, notice like this tempura is that like, you know, there's the usual suspects like you know prawns and everything but like pumpkins and then there's a egg right there's an egg in there and yeah we deep fry egg that's a bit weird but like and then and then uh like if you, if you uh cut the egg right so it's still you know the yolk is running that's that's uh that's beautiful and so that that's like what you can have when you um visit one of the uh, sanuki don shops here in kagawa and uh but this is uh sort of like well um sophisticated version of uh, sanuki udon and like um you know the well most of the most of sanuki udon shops like you go to like are like rougher i mean Terms like you know what you can get, but like um, they are more I think like authentic. So yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. We are really wishing that like you know the situation with COVID like you know it can be over like you know as soon as possible so that you guys can visit Kagawa and you know binge eating Sanuki udon. Um, you know, just take a udon taxi and then like, you know, um, visit like five shops in a row and um, just just binge eating Sanuki udon like and then get like, you know, as much as you can of it um, till uh, you get fed up with it. And then like, you know, you don't want to come back here like for another, I don't know, but like, you know.